It's coffee time, it's coffee time, it's the one pot chef drinking coffee in time. That's the crappiest intro ever. Welcome to the final edition of Coffee Time for 2011. There will be no coffee time in December because I'm going to be moving house, so I'm just not going to have time to put one together. But the next edition will be in January. So if you've got a question that you would like me to answer in the next edition of Coffee Time, please leave it in the comment section below here on YouTube. All right, let's get into the questions. Oh, first things first, I'm not drinking coffee in this episode because I'm still recovering from the stomach flu and I want to go easy on my stomach. So I've just got my bottle of water here instead. So uh, let's get into the questions. Okay, first one comes from Armination and his question or her question, I'm not sure, is... Is it possible to make traditional, typical Australian food? I'm from the other side of the globe and I really want to see what Aussie food is all about. Um, I'm not sure if there's any traditional Australian food because Australian food is interesting because uh, it's very heavily influenced by a whole bunch of different countries because we're a very multicultural society. So um, there's no sort of traditional sort of Australian food as such, but there's a lot of sort of favourites. And if you go to my channel, you'll see a lot of stuff on there um, is basically sort of the kind of things that Australians like to eat. So, um, go and explore. Uh, let's see, where's the next question? From iProds. Uh, where are we? Uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask if you had a favourite subject at school and did you go well in your exams? Um, I would say my favourite subject at school was probably art. I did visual arts for about three years in high school. Uh, I also took other subjects like business studies and computers and things like that, but art I always really enjoyed. Uh, as for exams, I didn't do terribly well on my exams, but that wasn't a major shock because I wasn't aiming to go to university. I wanted to go straight into full-time employment and that's what I did. So, uh, yeah, so um, if I'd actually put a lot more effort into my exams, I probably would have, but um, would have done better. But I wasn't intending to go to university, so it wasn't really a major issue. I just wanted to finish high school, and I did. Uh, let's see. Kelsey80. Yay! Hello, Kelsey. Uh, if you could only subscribe to one YouTuber, who would it be? God, you love to put me on the spot with questions like this, don't you? Because I have so many people on YouTube that I watch, and if I only pick one, everyone's going to be offended. Um... <laughs> I don't know. Um, there's so many people I watch. I'm not really sure. Uh, probably Miss Burpee because, like, she is guaranteed to make me absolutely laugh myself sick. Every video she does is just a stitch. So probably got to be burps. <laughs> oh, another one from Kelsey. Uh, what are your Christmas traditions? Any special plans this year? Um, our family doesn't really do a lot of sort of... Christmas tradition type things like we don't really have any traditions all we really tend to do is uh, the whole family gets together at my father's place on Christmas Day and we have a big lunch and because we're in Australia it's obviously not the middle of winter it's the height of summer so like having a big hot meal is completely unreasonable so we tend to have sort of most of the traditional Christmas type things like turkey and ham and stuff like that but we had them cold so we had that and we'll have like sort of hot vegetables like potatoes and things like that. But we have lots of salads and things like that. We'll have a Christmas pudding and custard and all that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, sort of have a few drinks and dance on the coffee table and pull crackers and yell at each other and swear we're never going to do it again. And then come next December 25, we do it all again. <laughs> I guess that's a tradition. <laughs> um, from... Tiziana Tina? I think that's how I, is that how I say it? I'm just going to say from Tina. What is your ultimate comfort food that makes you feel warm inside and think of your childhood? Um, it's going to sound totally ridiculous, but fish fingers. Uh, Americans call them fish sticks, but fish fingers. Um, simply because it was something that I used to eat all the time as a kid, and I don't really eat them these days, but any time that I do, it just reminds me of being eight years old and having fish fingers and mashed potato or something for dinner. It's it's just a childish sort of thing. And yeah, that I, I would pick fish fingers. Got a lot. Um, go metric today. Uh, I was wondering if you would make a Christmas pudding. Um, probably not because 
I am planning to do a couple of Christmas videos for the cooking channel this year, but um, the Christmas pudding is probably going to be a bit involved and um, it sounds a bit ridiculous, but that was something that my mum always used to make and I'm trying to sort of avoid doing that one because I, I know I'm not very good at making Christmas pudding and I'm trying to sort of preserve the memory of her Christmas pudding rather than destroy it with my horrible attempt. So, um, yeah, I probably won't do that, but I am doing something along those lines. I'll give you that as a clue, but um, it's not going to be Christmas pudding, though. Uh, oh, you give me a couple of questions, actually. Uh, let's see. Should... Oh, no, that's not a question. That's a comment about Marmite. Okay. <laughs> um, next one from Darlene211. What is the best way to make hot chocolate and can you make a vlog about it, please? I actually already did because um, if you go to my cooking channel, you'll find that I did a recipe video for hot chocolate. It's absolutely amazing. So go and check it out. Uh, Grace H. Fun. Do you have any plans for making an Anzac biscuit recipe anytime soon? Oh, again, I've already done that one too. So go to the, there and um, the cooking channel and check it out. Anzac biscuits. They're one of my favorites. I really love those. So, um, yeah, go and check that out. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Um, Jack Wilkins, if you could write or star in your own sitcom, what would it be, or what would it be called, and who would you want to star in it apart from maybe yourself? I don't know. If I was going to do a sitcom, I'd probably make it sort of semi-autobiographical. Semi it would probably be sort of like a bit about my life, and I don't know who I'd have in it. Grief. I'm not sure. I'd probably have, like, Miranda Hart as my sort of goofy sidekick, because she's a cracker. I love her show, Miranda. It's very funny. So, yeah, that sounds good. Uh, let's see. Abrahamic. I think I've got that right. Uh, I don't know. Ab. We'll call you Ab. Abs. Okay, Abs. <laughs> what? What's one thing you wish you could change about YouTube? What was the last song you sang spontaneously? Have you ever cried during a TV show? Do you have any peanut butter cups left over and can I have some? Okay, I'll take those in order. Um, what is the one thing you wish you could change about YouTube? Um, I wish that there was something that could be done about the amount of trolling and the really nasty comments and stuff that go on on YouTube recently. Um, a lot of people just say, I'll oh, block and delete. I think there needs to be something more about it because, like, it's one thing to, to turn around and say, oh, I don't like you, blah, 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 everything like that. There's another thing about the kind of really vulgar, sometimes threatening comments that get posted on people's videos and really there's sort of no callback because, like, you can go to the police and say somebody said this about me on the internet and they're going to basically sort of go, oh, bugger off, like, stop wasting our time. I think there probably should be something a bit more sort of substantial through YouTube that should be done about that, but I won't hold my breath. Uh, what was the last song you sang spontaneously? I was actually in the car earlier and I was sort of singing along to some music from from Glee. <laughs> I was singing Uptown Girl. <laughs> oh God, I'm a silly old queen. Um, have you ever cried during a TV show? Yes. Um... Probably when Billy died on Ally McBeal. That was a very sad episode, that one. So I admit it, I cried. Uh, do you have any peanut butter cups left over and can you have some? No, you can't have any because they're all gone. Oh, they got demolished during movie night. <laughs> Not all of them in one night, but they sort of we sort of slowly sort of worked through them, but there was a fair degree of them disappeared on movie night. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, next question. Have you ever cooked a tagine from Vu uh, Vaughan? Um, no, I've never made tagine. I haven't got a tagine pot, but um, I love it. I had a friend make it once and it was absolutely astounding. This beautiful, beautiful slow cooked beef with all these amazing Moroccan spices and pomegranate, everything all over it. It was absolutely astounding. I loved it. Um... Yeah, so I really should go and sort of learn how to do that and get a tajine pot, but um, I'll add that to the list for next year. Um, let's see. Where's the next one? Just want to verify how much of a chocolate addict you are. This is from uh, the Pashel Candle. 
If you were given the chance to own the world's largest chocolate factory, would you own it and what would be the reason? Um, probably not, because there's one thing I love and that's chocolate. And I would hate to be in the factory that makes chocolate because I wouldn't want to be put off it. I wouldn't want to sort of see how it's made and get sick of it. I'd, I'd rather just sort of live in blissful ignorance. So <laughs> I, I would never own a chocolate factory. Besides which, I'd never leave it if I did. <laughs> um, sunset Lover. What did you think of that gorgeous girl Sunset Lover that flew all the way from Utah to come to the Aussie gathering? Oh, God, I remember that, bitch. I tell you what, I bent over to pick up a coin. She stole my wallet. What a cow. <laughs> <laughs> now, I loved her. I love you, darling. I absolutely love you. I, I couldn't believe it when you when you were there. I, I was sort of going, whoa, you actually came all the way from the US to come to our gathering. And, oh, I'll tell you what, that was so much fun that night. I wish I got to hang out with you more that night. I'm sort of, unfortunately, I was sort of wandering around the room and had been wandering around all day and I was absolutely exhausted and decided I had to make an early night of it, but got big cuddles from you and I love that. <laughs> uh, the Chaos Dog, with a K. Um... Do you know where Estonia is? Do you know any Estonian cuisine? Um, I know Estonia is in Central Eastern Europe, but if you ask me to point it out on a map, I probably have a one in thousand chance of actually hitting it correctly. Um, I don't know any Estonian cuisine at all. Um, I would love to travel to Europe and go around sort of places like Estonia and all those sort of wonderful places out there because I'd love to go and sort of experience the culture and the food and just see what, how people live in a completely different sort of place to where I live. So maybe one day I will. It'll be nice. Um, I think it's, is it Eoan or Yoan? Yoan, Yoan, 1414? What kind of drinks do you like? You talk a lot about food, but hardly ever about drinks. Um, I assume you mean, do you mean alcoholic drinks or just drinks in general? Because I'll, I'll assume alcoholic drinks. Because usually when people ask about drinks, it's usually that. Um, I don't drink a lot. I, I used to many, many, many moons ago, back in my drinking days, um, when I used to go nightclubbing and all that sort of stuff, I used to drink outrageously, but um, not so much these days. But um, I'm slowly sort of have a few drinks here and there now and again. And I've, I couldn't be more sort of low class. The other day, I decided I really wanted to go and get something to drink because it had been a very long day and I thought, I might go down to the bottle shop and pick something up and had no idea what I was going to get. I ended up walking out with two two-litre casks of pre-mixed vodka drinks. I didn't even know vodka came in a cask, but it's one's got, I think it was vodka and cranberry juice and the other's vodka and cloudy apple juice and... I thought, oh, what the hell, sort of like, I don't buy alcohol very often. And I had a couple of glasses of the cranberry one, and it was really nice. So they've been sitting in the fridge ever since. So I keep sort of meaning to have maybe another glass after dinner or something. I'm sort of, it was very nice. I, I have to crack open the other one as well and see what the cloudy apple one was nice, because if that's nice or not, because it sounds good. So, yeah, but um, I don't drink much these days, sort of having a chance. Now, let's see. Sad and Lonely has asked about a thousand questions, so let's get started. Okay. What clothes do you wear most? E.g. jeans, short, polo neck. Um, I'm very casual these days. I used to dress up and stuff like that, but um, I tend to just go sort of t-shirts and polo necks type things and um, just shorts or sort of simple trousers. I don't tend to sort of go for anything terribly exotic or fashionable or risque. So I'm just, I'm just sort of casual slob. <laughs> uh, do you like winter? Um, yes, I do actually. I prefer it to summer because it's stinking hot here today and it's worse because it's got overcast clouds. So it's really humid as well. Um, can you juggle? No, I have no coordination whatsoever. Do you know steps are reforming? Oh, seriously? Are you kidding? I mentioned steps in the last video. And are they actually reforming? That's awesome. Oh, yes. I, my, oh, I'm just sort of buzzing now. <laughs> I love steps. <laughs> I'm such a geek. Um, what do you look for in a boyfriend? Um, someone who's load bearing. <laughs> I 
<laughs> and a pulse. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, next one said alone. Um, would you do a grocery haul? What do you buy when you go shopping? I'm not sure what you mean by a grocery haul. Um, what do I buy when I go shopping? Probably the same kind of stuff you do, sort of bread, milk, eggs, bucket of cheese, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> whatever I buy. <laughs> Spider-Man or Batman? Um, Batman. Spider-Man's just a freak. <laughs> Santa Lone has asked me like a thousand questions. Have you ever had a lemon curd and ham sandwich? Yuck. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> Uh, peanut butter and tomato sauce sandwich. Are you gross? Oh, good grief. Yes, that is too many questions, actually. Yes. Peanut butter and tomato sauce. Oh, God. Yuck. Oh, dear. Um, Clayton Jaros. What is your opinions, thoughts on teen bullying and suicide? Ooh, heavy one. Um, okay. Uh, teen bullying is... A very serious subject and a lot of people often forget sort of that it's not sort of this sort of victimless thing that sort of kids just have to get used to and it's part of growing up they often throw these sort of buzzwords around sort of oh if somebody's getting bullied oh it's good for them it's character building and stuff like that but often people who say that clearly have no idea what bullying is I, I experienced a lot of bullying when I was a kid and this wasn't just sort of pushing and shoving or name calling or anything like this this was sort of hardcore physical and emotional abuse it was absolutely appalling and it didn't matter that i contacted teachers or the school in general or principal or anything like that they didn't care they they literally sort of sort of go oh how awful well shake hands make up whatever and that's it and then it would just keep getting worse and worse and the school doesn't want to get involved and I think it really needs to be treated as seriously as it is because, like, there are kids out there who are getting physically and mentally abused on a daily basis in ways that are just simply incredible that if it was two adults instead of two children in the situation, it would not be a question. The police would be involved and the person perpetrating this stuff would be going to jail. But because it's two kids in a schoolyard, they don't want to get involved. So I think there needs to be a more serious crackdown on that. Um... As I said, it's like it's it's a direct cause of sort of so many of the teen suicides because they, these poor kids just can't handle the kind of horrific abuse they're being put through. So yeah, I, I think there needs to be more done about it. Um, let's try to go move on to something a little lighter, shall we? Um, XOXSAJ says, if you had to if you had to cut off one of your balls, which ball would you cut off? Um, I think if there was a situation where I had to cut off one of my balls, I don't think I'd care which one it was, to be honest, because, like, I think either way it was go wasn't going to be pleasant. Um, <laughs> the Kiwi Cook. What is really in the coffee cup? Well, there's always coffee in the coffee cup. Why? What are you suggesting? I haven't got a coffee cup today, so I can honestly say that there is coffee in it. Probably somewhere, eventually. Fly Lady 13 how do you get your videos to be 57 minutes? Is it a YouTube perk? Love your videos. Um, yeah, I'm a YouTube partner, which means that I, I can put extended videos up. So um, I'm trying to make sure this one doesn't go to 57 minutes. This one, where are we at? 18, 19 minutes roughly at the moment. So I'm keeping an eye on it. Um, but yeah, I can put extended videos up. So that's just part of the thing as being a YouTube partner. Uh... Let's see. Okay, uh, glass and diaphany, I think it is. Or diaphane? I, I don't know. Glassy. Hello, Glassy. Uh, Glassy's question is, can you give me some advice on chopping? I tend to have small accidents in the kitchen when chopping up vegetables, and I want to know if there is a technique or trick to avoid cutting myself by accident. I can probably demonstrate it for you right now, because a lot of people make the mistake of... Let's see, I'll put the screen up so I can see myself here so I know I'm doing this right. Okay, imagine this is your vegetable. Let's say it's a carrot, okay? A lot of people make the mistake of taking the knife in one hand and they leave the carrot stationary and they move the knife. What you need to do is you're using both hands, you keep the 
knife going up and down, don't move it from its position, just up and down, and then you use the other hand to guide the carrot to the knife through it that way. That will help you to reduce cutting yourself unnecessarily. So like, I can't guarantee you won't absolutely cut yourself because like those things happen, but it will certainly make it a lot easier for you. It just takes a bit of practice. So just make sure you use one hand to guide the, the food and the other hand just to chop up and down. So give that a go. Um, where are we? Let's see. Luna, ha Luna Hand says, what is your occupation or do you only make videos for YouTube? This is what I do. I make cooking videos on YouTube and I do this as a bit of a side project for fun. So that's what I do for a job. Uh, what was your favorite book when you were little from Gibilo 4? I think it's a Gibilo 4, yeah. Uh, my favorite book when I was a kid was Fox in Socks by Dr. Seuss. And it still is one of my favorites. I love it. It's one of the few books that has defeated me because of the amount of tongue twisters in it. Sort of, I can usually do quite well until I get up to Licks Lakes and then I get sort of tongue tied and it just goes to hell from there. <laughs> um, who has been the biggest inspiration in your life from Yoshi the Kid 18? Um, I don't know. I've had so many inspirations in my life. There's a lot of important people and events that have happened in my life that have sort of made me who I am because the way I see it is a person, shut up email, <laughs> I get so much email, it keeps beeping. The way I see it is a person is a bit like a tapestry, lots and lots of different threads that have been brought together to form one thing. And each one of those threads are important. And if you pull one thread out, the whole thing could start sort of collapsing in on itself. So I reckon that all those little individual threads are like people that you've met and things that you've learned from people and events in your life and they all come together and they're all very important and every single thing, whether it's good or bad, has helped to form the person that you are. So I think that's sort of the inspiration is like all of those events that have happened in my life, all of the people that I've met and encountered, they've made me me. So that's how I see it. Uh, Renznita asks, do you ever make anything gluten-free? Um, if I do, it's not on purpose. Uh, basically, my cooking channel is very basic. I tend to sort of help people who have never cooked before by showing them how to do basic recipes. I don't tend to do things terribly specific like vegan recipes, gluten-free recipes, all of that sort of stuff, because there are so many channels out there that exclusively deal with those kind of recipes. I figure sort of there isn't a lot out there that deal sort of specifically with people who have never sort of stepped into a kitchen before, which is kind of the whole philosophy behind my cooking show. So um, I've never really done a whole lot of gluten stuff or gluten free stuff. So um, I'll look into it, but um, it's, it's, I tend, tend to sort of avoid doing anything terribly specific like that or um, vegetarian cuisine or vegan cuisine or anything like that, because I find sort of if I get too or too complicated or too, exclusive on a certain subject people start to get sort of a bit sort of annoyed so I don't know I, th I think I've carved out a niche and people like it so I'll try to stick to it um let's see tiger eyes 8961 I'm from the US and I've heard of Vegemite is so good uh can we make it here if you're asking me for a recipe for Vegemite you can't make it at home because it's actually made one of the base ingredients in it is the a kind of yeast that they scrape off the bottom of beer barrels from a brewery. And unless you just happen to have that lying around, you're not going to be able to make it. So, um, yeah, so that, that roughly how it's made. Um, let's see. Love NATO XOX. How is your infinite amount of Reese's peanut butter cups going? They're gone. We've already covered that one. Uh, Fly Lady 13 again. Do you think you will ever move to a different part of New South Wales? I don't know. Whatever, we'll see what the future holds. I've lived in a couple of places in New South Wales in my life, so I can't rule it out. <laughs> um, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that one. It's like H V H S V A V V V V V two. Do you intend to participate in no in November this year? No, I decided not to do it this year because it was really really uncomfortable to grow that thing last year, and it's funny because I haven't shaved for a couple of days, but um. I did 
it all last year for November growing the moustache and it was so uncomfortable and so scratchy and I couldn't do it. I, I hated it, so I, I wasn't going to do it again. But I made a very sizable donation to Movember the other day to Nico's Movember appeal. So if you haven't done that, you should go over to his channel and check out his Movember Mo Space. And it's very good, so go and donate some money. It's a good cause. Um, what's the other one? Uh, what's your opinion on Australian supermarkets decorating their stores for Halloween? I think it's a bit ridiculous because Halloween has never been a tradition or a holiday in Australia. And it seems to me it's the supermarkets who are pushing this tradition in Australia by sort of putting up this Halloween themed stuff in October and putting all the sort of candy type things and all that sort of stuff out. And it's just, it's not a good thing to sort of try and promote over here because it's never worked and a lot of people don't understand how things like trick-or-treating work. They they know about door knocking on people's things and asking for stuff, but they don't understand sort of like the actual sort of social faux pas and things that they shouldn't be doing in a, with that. And so I think until sort of that sort of stuff is sort of properly explained, I don't think it'll ever take off here. And it's very unpopular despite people trying to do it here. A lot of people are very upset about it sort of being brought in. So, uh, as I say, that's democracy. Um, MRMV Reyes 1 asks, If you could come to the United States, which state would you visit? Um, probably California, because it's probably the most tourist-friendly. But I would love to go to New York, because, like, New York is, like, food mecca. But I'd also love to go and visit, say, Texas. Just, I'd love to go and see the Texas State Fair. Because, like, anywhere that sells deep-fried Coca-Cola is totally somewhere I want to see. <laughs> um, let's see. Word nerd. Do you love me? I love everyone. Well, almost everyone. <laughs> there are notable exceptions. <laughs> Catfreak190. What do you prefer to use, Twitter or Facebook? Um, I don't know if I have a particular preference, but I, I tend to use them both quite equally. But um, Twitter, like if I'm looking to find out about something instantly, tends to be the one that sort of I'll get more information off first. Like if something happens in the world, I'll know about it on Twitter before I'll know about it on Facebook or even on the news. So, yeah. Um... Mr. Butterworth 24. Two questions. Do you like Arnold Palmer? It's a brand. It is just half lemonade, half iced tea. And also, do you crack your knuckles? Um, I have never heard of Arnold Palmer lemonade iced tea thing. So I think it must be... I've, I've never heard of it. So I don't know if we get it over here. And do I crack my knuckles? Not anymore. I used to when I was a teenager, but I don't anymore. So... I don't know why. I, like, I didn't like deliberately sort of force myself not to do it. I just stopped doing it. So I don't know. Sweet Candy Fifty Five. I love that name, Sweet Candy. <laughs> why did I say it like that? I'm gonna answer a question now. What is your favourite chocolate dessert? Uh, how did you come about making videos on YouTube? I know you've been busy. Did you get a chance to make that Coca-Cola cake recipe I sent you? Absolutely. Oh, yes. Yes. The Coca-Cola recipe, the Coca-Cola cake recipe you sent me, I actually did do it about a month ago, and it was fantastic. Uh, I made it. I didn't bother to make any icing or frosting or anything like that to put on it. I just made it and took it out of the oven, let it cool a bit. I had a slice of it, and it was absolutely astounding. It did not last. So I've added it to my list of recipes to absolutely make into videos next year. So, and I'll totally mention your name on that because it was so amazing. I really loved that. Um, favorite chocolate dessert. Um, can't go past chocolate mousse. You've got to have a nice bit of chocolate mousse now and again. Uh, how did you come about making videos on YouTube? Basically, um, it was just sort of... I, I first discovered YouTube and I saw all these people making sort of videos in their own homes which with their camcorders and whatnot and I thought it was such a cool idea and I thought well I'll give it a go and I started and I made a really horrible cooking video which is actually still up my first ever cooking video and it was goes to show how far I've come because I, I never knew how to use a camcorder I 
had never edited before and knew nothing about lighting. I didn't know a damn thing about sort of videos in general, but I had a go at it anyway. And I had people ask me to do more and the rest is history. Um, let's see. The, the big man, eight, 12 many? I, I don't know that username. <laughs> uh, when you go shopping for the ingredients for your videos, do you buy what's on sale and do you use coupons? Um, if you mean coupons as in the ones you clip out of the newspaper, we don't actually get them in Australia. We don't do that at all. Um, I tend to buy things that are on sale if it's a brand that I normally buy. I tend to sort of stick to sort of particular brands. I've done the research and tried things and decided which ones I like the most and I tend not to sort of change brands on most things so once I find something that's good that I enjoy I tend to stick to it so yeah but if it's on sale it's on sale so yeah I don't particularly buy something because it's on sale I tend to buy it if it's something that I enjoy if it's on sale so yeah. Uh, Bartholomew, are there any English people living close to you that you know of? Yes, the woman next door because she Talks in an old accent and does it very loud all the time, like. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cat Freak 190 again. Uh, have you had any interruptions while you were filming a cooking video? How do you avoid them? Also, how do you avoid any interruptions when you are recording coffee time? Basically, it's just good luck. Um, I tend to turn off the phones when I'm recording cooking videos. <laughs> Speaking of interruptions, I just got another email. Um, I tend to turn the phones off when I'm filming cooking videos because it's easier that way. So like I don't have a ringing phone or anything, but generally I just sort of pick a time of day where I'm alone in the house, where it's generally quiet in the neighborhood. So I don't have to worry too much about sort of things like that. Like if somebody interrupts me, they interrupt me and that just happens. But it's never been a major issue, so I've managed to be lucky like that. Uh, they also ask, can you please explain the difference between Vegemite and Marmite? I'm in the UK. They're basically more or less the same product, except I just think Marmite tastes awful. <laughs> I think it's just sort of personal snobbery more than anything else. Um, Christian2006 one asks, how long do a man's legs have to be? Um... Long enough to wrap around my neck? I don't know. <laughs> what a strange question. <laughs> um, let's see, I can't find the next question. Uh, oh, we've already answered that one about why the videos are so long. Uh, okay. Keritako, can you please make the Coffee Time video shorter? Like, Ask IJ by I Justine. This is way too long for me to watch. Um, I considered the idea of doing them shorter ones, maybe weekly, but I decided to do them monthly for a very good reason. Um, I don't want to get bored doing them, and I don't want people to get bored of them, and I figure that if they're on weekly, people are going to get sick of them and not watch them. But if they're on monthly, it's like, kind of like a special thing. And I've had pretty much universal positive feedback about the length. They actually like the idea of having a long extended video like this. And I know a lot of people who actually download their, or have put it up on their iPod and they'll sit there and listen to it like a podcast. So hello to the podcast people. <laughs> so yeah, um, I, I won't be making them shorter. So like I, I, my suggestion is that you just watch what you watch. And if you don't watch it all, you hit favorites and you come back to it later and skip back to where you missed. So go from there. Um, I'm trying to find the next one. How do you decide what to be cooked when? I mean, do you have a timetable for your meals and desserts or just a list of things that you choose randomly from, from Smiley Nonna? Okay. Uh, basically, the schedule is that every week I have two videos uploaded on the cooking channel, one savoury and one sweet. And there's no sort of specific pattern as to what I actually choose. Um, often there are requests where people... Like, a lot of people have asked for a particular thing, like pumpkin pie was a good example recently. I was, pardon me, I was absolutely bombarded with messages and comments and tweets saying, please make pumpkin pie, please make pumpkin pie, for the love of God, please make pumpkin pie. And I kind of got the message after about three or four thousand million comments that maybe I should make a pumpkin pie video. So that's one way. 
Uh, otherwise, it's just basically I get hit with inspiration and sort of like, oh, I bet that would make a good video. Okay, I'll do that. And that's how it goes. So there's no particular pattern or anything. It's sort of like I've got a little list on my desktop of ideas and possible future recipe videos and things and I just write things down and I go through it when I need to come up with a video and decide if there's anything there that's of, that I can do. It's also based on what I happen to have in the kitchen at the time. Sort of I try to avoid going out and specifically buying things unless it's absolutely necessary. I try to sort of do it based on what I have in the kitchen because the whole idea is that it should be just basic ingredients, what you have in the kitchen. So, yeah. Uh, Cozy K, what is your normal early morning routine? Um, I don't know. Um, I get up, I make a cup of coffee, I sit down in front of the computer and check emails and comments and things like that and I go from there. It's <laughs> nothing particularly exciting. I don't, I don't start the day with a dance routine. I wish I did. <laughs> I'm not a morning person at all. Um, what do you think of Ireland and the Irish from, I think it's Yoan 1414 again. Um, I love Ireland. I've never been there. I love the Irish. I think they're always a lot of fun. Um, I remember one particular night down in Sydney where I had more than a few drinks with a large group of Irish footballers from uh, some, I think it was a gay rugby league contest or something like that. And my God, those men could drink. And they weren't too shy about showing you how to scrum. <laughs> it was a good night. But yeah, um, always had a good opinion of the Irish. It was always good for a good night out. <laughs> um... Jill M. De Jesus asks, will you miss the elderly choir in your new home and do you expect less interference there? I will not miss the over 80s glee club from next door. My God. They've been getting really bizarre recently, actually. Some of their song choices have been d disturbing, to say the least. So um, I'll, I'll be glad to be gone because they are, well, they're obviously just having a bit of fun next door. It is very disruptive, especially when you're trying to do videos and stuff like that. So, um... Yeah, sort of, it's, it'll be good to sort of have less sort of distractions and things like that. Oh, we're at 37 minutes. I better start sort of trying to wrap this up. So how much have we got to go? Next question. Uh, do you have a set way you do your cooking videos or do you just turn the camera on and cook from Natalie1605? Um, generally how it works is I'll do the prep work first. So like... Any vegetables that need to be chopped, I'll chop them up and put them into little bowls and everything so it's all ready to just chuck in when I go and film. Um, tidy up the kitchen, set up the lighting and whatnot like that. I'll put the tripod up and put the camera on it and then I'll record the intro bit sort of where I sort of stand in front of the fridge and introduce the video. Um, because that's usually the thing that's sort of most likely to go wrong because I'll screw up the lines and things like that. But um, from there, it's just a matter of just actually cooking and filming it. So, um, yeah, that's basically the set pattern that I do. It's taken a while to get into the right groove of it, but it works. So I'm happy with that. Pouncer28. Can you do a Minnesota accent? Just watch the movie Fargo. Some of us do sound like that. I have no idea what a Minnesota accent sounds like, and I've never watched Fargo. So I don't know. I, I, I can't do one. Sorry. <laughs> I could do something vulgar and offensive and pretend it's a Minnesota accent, but I don't know if it would make any any sense whatsoever. Um, let's see. Catfreak190 again. Do you watch any Australian YouTube comedians such as I'm Mr. Teddy? Yes. Uh, I'm not subscribed to him, but I often see his videos pop up on the front page of YouTube, and I do watch some of his videos. His McDonald's rant was a cracker. He's very, very funny. So, um... Absolutely, I do watch him. So, yeah, um, if you haven't checked him out, you should go and check him out. Uh, sad and alone again. What is your usual routine for the day? We've just done that one. What is the point of men having nipples? That's sad and alone again. Um, what is the point of men having nipples? <laughs> Where do these questions come from? What is the point of men having nipples? I don't know. I choose not to question it. But the fact is, men have great nipples and everyone knows it. Please feel free to send me pictures of your nipples. Um, best nipples will be appear in the next Coffee Time video. <laughs> I'm going to get so many pictures. <laughs> God help us. Um, Catfreak190. 
Um, as you're approaching 30,000 subscribers, are you going to get your fans to submit their congrats to you to be in a video? Ah, I've actually passed 30,000 subscribers already. I did that about a month ago. Um, I consciously decided not to do a collaboration video this time round, and I'll tell you why. Uh, basically, the last time I did one, it was an absolute disaster from start to finish. Uh, it was a hell of a lot of work. I got swamped with hundreds of videos from people all over the world, and obviously there was going to be way too many to put into one collaboration, and I had a lot of people say, oh, why don't you just do more than one video? And they go, I'm not doing a hundred... Like, I, I would have to do, like, sort of three or four videos of all these people saying thank you to me or congratulations to me, and it was just a bit wankerish. But, um... The other problem with it was that I was getting people sending me videos in these bizarre, obscure video formats that I'd never even heard of, let alone could actually use. I couldn't find converters from them, and when I actually contacted these people and said, could you please convert this file to something else because I can't use it, they weren't responding. And I got a lot of people upset with me last time because their video didn't make it in, and I'm there sort of going, I'm sorry, I've got like a thousand videos, like, I'm sorry, I could not put everybody in, and... I, it would just seem to be a hell of a lot of stress and trouble for something that doesn't really get a whole lot of views. Like, the, if you look at the collaboration videos I've done in the past for those sort of things, they don't get a lot of views. So, like, it, it just seemed like a lot of work for really not that much effort. It wasn't really worth the effort. So, um, I decided this time around, I thought I'd just leave it. I might might sort of try doing it again at a later date on a, on a bigger sort of thing. Another bloody email. God, you people never stop. <laughs> Yeah, I might, I might try doing it on a bigger milestone, but I thought I'll just leave it for the time being because it was a bit crazy last time. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to find the next question. Okay. Uh, ASM Jonas asks, how much do you earn from your YouTube channels? Not asking for specifics, but is your paycheck fair enough? I'm not allowed to discuss it. I'm sorry. I got a non-disclosure agreement with YouTube and Google, so it's part of my contract as a YouTube partner, so I'm literally not allowed to discuss it in any way whatsoever. So, sorry, mate. Um, let's just say I'm not on the bread line. That's, that's as much as I can say. Uh, next question. Um, have you ever made a successful dish but lied about it tasting good as you didn't actually like it yourself? From Di Dyke... Nine? Deutsch nine? I, I, I don't know. D-Y-C-H-E nine. Uh, greetings from Wales. Um, yes, and I actually did it recently with a video that I made because, and it seems like such a sellout thing to do, but I made a video of a recipe that I have never liked. It's not that it I'm bad at making it or anything like that. I have never liked this particular recipe anywhere, whoever makes it. I just don't like it. But I had so many requests for me to make it that I made it. And I haven't uploaded it yet, but um, I thought it was just awful because it's just not something that I liked. So at the end with the tasting bit, let's just say this is my fork, what I did was I took the fork and I took a fork full of the, of the stuff and I just went like this. Mmm! Oh, that's so good! Yeah, oh, you can really taste the la la la! Oh, lovely! Mm, 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 like that. And because I'm off camera, no one knew the difference. And I am Never, ever, ever going to tell you which video it was. I'm just going to let you sort of have the mystery of that one. So, see if anyone can guess. But I guarantee you probably won't because I, I'm a very good liar. <laughs> <laughs> and we're up to the last question from Girly Girl Guru. What is your favourite holiday-ish meal in terms of taste? I'm glad you put in terms of taste because that sort of is an interesting one. Because, um... Christmas, my dad makes something which looks absolutely evil and ugly, but tastes absolutely phenomenal. And I don't even know what it's called exactly. It's like a sausage log. Basically, he takes some sausage mince and he forms it into a sort of a weird shaped looking log. It looks like a giant turd, basically. And he rolls it in one of those packets of the dried stuffing mix that you sort of make up and you put inside a chicken make stuffing. And he puts it in the oven and he roasts it. And once it's gone completely cold, he slices it up into thin slices and 
you can put it on sandwiches, you can have it with sort of like just as a cold meat type thing, but it is absolutely fantastic. And you have it with a bit of cranberry sauce on it and put it on a sandwich, it is absolutely phenomenal. So I love it, that sausage thing. Everyone calls it the sausage thing. We don't know what it is, it's just great. So um, that would be my favorite holiday-ish thing. So, <laughs> and with that, we come to the very end of this year's coffee times. So 45 minutes, we did quite well. Didn't go too far over. So yeah, uh, if you've got questions for the next coffee time, which is in January, uh, please leave them in the comment section below here on YouTube. And until then, keep safe, keep out of trouble. Lots of love to you all, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.